Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf and to another book haul. Yes, I bought more books. Bookstores have reopened here. Um, I know that in the US you have curbside service, um, but in here in Cologne um, the bookstores have actually reopened. You can go in with your mask uh, and buy some new books and that's what I did. Although I have to say some of the books I ordered uh, from my local used indie bookstore and the one to begin with is one of those and that is Louis... Oh God, Claire. Um, let me see. This is better. <laughs> Louise Edrick, The Antelope Wife, uh, first published in 1998, I'm sorry. Um, and if you're following my channel, then you know that I have this ongoing project in 2020 uh, called Author Spotlight. And uh, what it means is that I'm reading all of Louise Edrick's novels in chronological order. Um, this is June, obviously, number six. Uh, and I'm not doing that alone. Uh, I'm doing that with Terry from Miss Terry B. And it, so far it has been a really fantastic experience to see, not only to read the books, but also to discuss it um, with my buddy reader and to see sort of the development of an author. Now this book will be the first one uh, that we read that is not part of the Love Medicine series where um, they are recurring characters all the time big, huge um, cast of characters that is recurring. Uh, this one is set uh, in uh, Minneapolis. All kinds of pictures uh, coming, uh, of course, when I, when I say that uh, the name of that city. Um, and the, the story is about uh, uh, multi-generational various people because Minneapolis used to be the hunting ground uh, of a, a native nation and it goes back and forth in time from what I understood trying uh, to capture various uh, stories in the past and in the present people who live in that city. So I'm really excited uh, to go on with this uh, author spotlight project uh, together with Terry. Next up are two non-fiction books and the first is this uh, Cordelia Fine, Delusions of Gender. Um, first published in 2005 and I have never read Cordelia Fine. Um, she writes, uh, she's a science writer, she was born in Canada um, and now teaches uh, is a re researcher and teaches in Australia at a university and she mainly writes about the brain. Um, and so this is brain research uh, about gender and gender stereotypes. As the subtitle, subtitle says, the real science behind sex differences. Um, I'm um, reading on feminism a lot. Uh, it, it, that has always been an interest of mine. And um, it sort of, um, yeah, became more in the focus over the last uh, maybe year or something, also because of a book pro project that I'm working on. And I'm trying to find fiction and nonfiction um, to educate me on various aspects of uh, feminism. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this, of course, because otherwise I wouldn't have bought it. Da, uh, but if I I like uh, Cordelia Fine's uh, uh, style and the way she presents the research, there are a couple of other books she wrote on brain and feminism. Her most famous one, I think, is Testosterone Rex. Uh, so if I like this one, I might pick up uh, more books by her. And the second nonfiction book is an essay collection by Rebecca Solnit. Um, problems with the glare today. Let me go like this. The mother of all questions for the feminism. So obviously this is also a nonfiction book about feminism. Now Rebecca Solnit I think is probably so well known that I don't need to say much. She was born in San Francisco. We are approximately the same age. She was born in 1961. Um, and I think her most famous um, uh, essay collection is the one called Man Explain Things to Me uh, with this essay, the title essay, uh, where the word mansplaining comes from. She didn't invent that word, but from that essay, Men Explain Things to Me, the word man mansplaining was coined. I 
um, read, uh, um, the last thing I read by her was her memoir recently published, uh, Recollections of My Non-Existence, um, and two other essay collections, the Men Explain Things to Me essays, and uh, call them by their true name. And I, I'm completely fascinated by Rebecca Solnit, so I want to read all of her work, especially the essays. She um, is a writer and activist, a historian. Um, she writes about um, society, but with a focus also on feminism in a lot of her work. And I'm, as you might have guessed, most interested in that part of her work. Um, what I really like uh, about her is, first of all, I like the writing style, but I think she is a, an, a truly intelligent and original thinker. And in each book I've read uh, so far, she has always given me um, new ways of looking things. Um, so, uh, for instance, uh, she, she in the last collection that I read, she talked about gay marriage and why people are opposed, or some people are opposed um, uh, 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 towards gay marriage, and the way she reflects on that and why people uh, 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 would be in opposition of, of gay marriage, that was such an, an original way of thinking, um, yeah, that I'm sure I will remember that. So if, if this is as good as the other collections, essays that I read by her, then I'm for sure in for a real treat. Oh, and this was published, by the way, in 2017. So it's I think it's her most recent. Next up, we're back to fiction again and um, a debut novel, and that is Wayetu Moore, um, She Would Be King, first published in 2018. And I've been meaning to read this book since it has been published, and then it slipped my mind as it happened. And I will tell you with the next book why it came back to my mind. And I finally bought it and will read it. Uh, Vayetu Moore is a Liberian-American author. Uh, she was born in Liberia, but she lives in the U.S. now. And this is a book about Liberia and the uh, coming of age of that nation, the foundation of that nation, told through uh, three characters um, with special gifts. So there is magical realism. And the main uh, character of these three is Bessa, um, a young woman exiled from a village. And then she meets up with the two other characters, um, Norman and June Day. And together they yeah, go on an adventure sounds like a children's book, but you know what I mean. I'm a bit um, apprehensive. Maybe that was the reason that the book then slipped my mind, because as you know, um, uh, magical realism often doesn't quite work for me. But um, the story and the setting and to read something about Liberia... Um, I think it's it's worth a try for me. So I, I will keep you posted uh, once I've read it. And the book that brought the previous book back on, in my, on my mind from the slipping, you know, um, is um, the author's memoir, uh, The Dragons, the Giant, the Women, uh, which was just published um, beginning of June or end of May, beginning of June. I think June. So this is uh, the story of Wayetu Moore's life, her child, early childhood in Liberia. Uh, during um, the, the war, uh, her father is far away in New York, and then uh, Wayetu herself um, flees the war and immigrates to the U.S. as well, to Texas, uh, first of all. And she recounts her experience, childhood in Monrovia, Liberia, but then also as a young uh, immigrant, uh, to the U.S. Um, I, I'm always interested in memoirs, as you probably know if you're following my channel. I, I love to read memoirs, and this one in particular, of course, uh, caught my interest uh, uh, because of the author that I meant to read the debut novel of, and then I didn't. So I thought, I'm going to buy both of them. <laughs> Uh, the memoir and the debut novel. I'm not sure yet in which order I will read them. 
uh, I might read the memoir first uh, because I'm sure that uh, her, the author's childhood in Liberia um, informed during the 19, mid 1980s. Um, she was born in 1985. Uh, so I'm sure that her memoir uh, and her own experience probably informed her debut novel. So I might uh, go and read this first. Oh, and I forgot uh, to tell you that Wayetta Moore uh, also writes children's books, and together with her siblings, uh, she founded a nonprofit organization publishing uh, children's books featuring children from countries that are underrepresented in children's books. So, if you're interested in children's books at all or in that nonprofit, I will leave a link uh, to the nonprofit called One More Book uh, down in the description box. And of course, the last book of my book haul, How Could It Be Any Different, is a German book. Uh, a novel by Mariam Kusel Husseini called Chudi, uh, published just a couple of months ago in March. And it hasn't been translated um, into English or any other language yet. So if you don't read German, I understand that you will stop watching the video now. Uh, Mariam Kusel Husseini was born in Kabul. Um, but she moved with her family to Germany and now lives in Berlin. And this is her fourth book, her fourth novel, uh, but it's a new to me author. So it's an author that I've just discovered. Uh, Judy is historical fiction about a real life person. Hugo von Judy was his name. Um, and he was um, the director of the National Gallery in Berlin at the turn of the century, 19th to, to 20th century. So the book opens in 1896 when Trudy decided to show for the first time uh, works of uh, modern art, impressionists, Manet, Monet, Rodin, people who are now part of the canon of art. But at that time, back then, uh, it was controversial art. Impressionism, uh, the, the term impressionism was coined um, as a negative word. Um, some reviewer uh, called the works he saw not real, they're just impressions. So that's how the word impressionist came to be. Anyway, I'm digressing. Um, so this is a book about this man, about his quest against uh, the establishment, uh, the, the emperor and the people who fund um, uh, the museum to show art that at that time was controversial. It's an, a subject that fascinates me, art uh, in novels, but also about this figure, uh, Hugo von Trudy. Um, so I, I immediately grabbed the, this book when I read a review um, about the, uh, the book and the topic. As again, unfortunately, only in German, which also means that I'm reading it for the Read German 2020 challenge, challenge, quote unquote, that Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventure and I are running, which is just to me, it just means that we want to encourage people to read more books originally written in German. You can read it in any translation that it's the book is available in um, if the book is originally written in German. And we have a Goodreads group. I will leave a link uh, in the description box if you haven't heard of this quote-unquote challenge and want to check it out. And of course, I will also leave a link to Mel's channel. So these were the books that I bought in June. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the book haul and I also hope you are still all safe and healthy. I'm looking forward as always to your comments and I'll see you soon in the next one.